everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to card 6 in my holiday card series. In today's video I will be painting a poinsettia or poinsettia, whatever you like to pronounce it, I call it poinsettia. And if you speak German it's Weihnachtsstern and if you speak Slovak it's Vianočná Ruža. Poinsettias are another thing I really enjoy putting on my Christmas cards, but I did not think I will be able to paint it myself. If you are new to my channel, I'm pretty much a beginner when it comes to painting and drawing my own images. Normally I would use stamps and color those images, but at the beginning of this year I decided to challenge myself and step outside of my comfort zone and make some cards that I paint myself. If you would like to see the cards, I will leave the link to the playlist with these cards in the description below. So painting a poinsettia was rather intimidating to me, but I did give it a try and this was my first practice piece that I painted. And while it's not perfect, it does resemble poinsettia and that's all I wanted. So I practiced a bit to figure out the best way I like to paint it. And while my technique might not be the best, I really like the results. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. So let's jump into it. As I said, I practiced a bit and I kept those practice pieces. I'm not sure if this is interesting for you, but let me show you how I got to the final image because you might want to paint it differently. The method I don't like, you might like. Let's start with the first practice piece. I do like it, but in the middle there should be a gap or empty space. At the bottom of the poinsettia leaves there are little stems, not sure if that is a correct term, but that's how the leaves are joined together. And also I think that the leaves are too narrow. In the next example I tried painting the lines in the middle first and from that I painted the leaves. I saw some tutorials where the artist started like that and I don't like this method. Also on one example I tried to paint the top leaves first and on the other I started with the bottom leaves. The next practice piece is this one and here I made the petals bigger and rounder although the paper was bigger as well. And I also tried one more time to paint the red leaves starting with the bottom petals and then painting the top petals over the already painted leaves. And I do not like this method either. I prefer to start with the top leaves and just paint around them. Also, there is something about the four leaves on each layer that I don't like. It's not ugly, but I just think it's way too symmetrical. The next piece I painted is this one. I started with the top leaves, I painted the leaves thinner but not too thin, and I also painted more petals. And this is my favorite way of painting it. The only little problem was I was still unsure and doubting myself. And here is a huge advice guys. After a few minutes thinking how to paint it, checking out various videos that were more confusing than helpful, I thought, sod it. I will do it my way and I just went for it. And here are my last two pieces I painted in preparation for this video. I'm really happy with the results. I think they do look like poinsettias. So let me finally show you how I painted this poinsettia flower. The products I'm using here are pretty much the same as on my previous card, except I'm using a different watercolor cardstock. This one is from the company Ranger. I like it because it has really nice texture. I'm starting with the middle petals and I picked this bright red paint, but I wanted the top petals to be a little bit darker, so I picked a brown that I will mix with the red, because the watercolor set I have does not have a dark red, but it is like for pinks. So I started painting. First I visualize where the middle of the flower will be. On my card it's slightly above the middle because I will be adding a sentiment later. The shape of the leaf uh, you could say it's like in a shape of a raindrop, a slightly imperfect raindrop. Actually I was trying not to make them the same. And I started with an outline of the leaf and then I painted over the middle. I definitely cannot paint the petals and leaves with just one or two strokes for that I need more practice. And also I don't have a good brush for that. The brush I'm using here is in the size 8. It might be too small, but I really like using it. Another reason why I chose the brown paint is to add a little bit of the brown at the bottom of the leaf. I saw someone doing this and I liked it. On the first leaf I forgot to add the brown, but I came back. But it's better to add the brown while the paint is wet so it can spread out. And the first leaf was a little bit dry. However, you don't have to do this, the brown tank is completely optional. I let the piece to dry and while it was drying, I used this time to work on another cards that I will show you at the end.
After the piece was dry, I started working on the red leaves at the bottom. Did you know that the red leaves are not the flower? The yellow center is actually the flower. Anyways, the shape of the leaf I painted the same way as on the top leaves. I was trying to be very careful not to paint over the top leaves. And I also added the brown at the bottom of the leaf. I noticed the gap in the middle was a little bit too big. So some of the bottom leaves I painted closer to the middle. Here I needed to be extra careful not to paint over the top leaves. The brush I'm using has a nice pointy tip, which was very helpful. As you can see, the shade of the red is pretty much the same on the top and the bottom leaves. This was because I was picking the color directly from the pan. I wanted to mix the brown only in the middle of the pan and pick the pure red from the sides, but I wasn't careful and the colors mixed together. As I said, I painted few of the flowers and on some I used a palette where I mixed the colors. So if you would like to have different shades, it's good to use a separate palette. I let the piece dry and once it was dry, I used a brush in the size 0 and I painted the veins that are on the leaves. I think this brings the flower to life and it makes it to look a little bit more real. Also I painted in the little stems in the middle. I think painting them after the leaves are done is much easier than starting with them. And I think this is another thing that brings the flower to life. Next I painted the green leaves, pretty much the same way as I painted the red leaves. I didn't paint them between each of the red leaves because I wanted them to be more random. But you can paint the green leaves between each of the red petals if you want. I let it dry and then I painted the veins like I did on the red petals. So the painting of the leaves is done, I really like it, but I wanted to add a little bit of splatter. I picked the brown, green and golden paint and I just splattered it over the panel with the poinsettia. This is completely optional, if you prefer more of a clean look, just keep it without the splatter. And I almost forgot about the middle of the poinsettia, which is actually the flower. There are these tiny yellow green dots, they are not dots, but I cannot think of another word, but I painted them as dots. And I just used a golden paint and put few little dots in the middle. Another thing that is optional is a sentiment. The card doesn't really need one, but since I have stamps with sentiments, I find it really difficult not to use them. I picked a Merry Christmas stamp and I stamped it below the poinsettia using a black ink. You could also write a sentiment yourself, but this time I decided not to do that because my handwriting is really all over the place. Lastly, I adhered the panel on top of a card base using a double-sided tape. The panel with the poinsettia is smaller than the card base. I usually cut them smaller as it's easier to adhere. But those panels are smaller because the cardstock I used comes only in the US letter size. And I cut it into four panels where one side was about 8mm shorter. 
so I made the other side a little bit shorter as well and I think it creates a really nice frame. So the card is finished, I really like how it turned out and I really can't believe I painted this myself. I like the flower in red but you can also paint these flowers in other colors like pink or purple. As I mentioned, while the piece was drying I painted other poinsettias and here are all the flowers I painted so far. You can see they are all different which I really like. I think this is going to be my main Christmas card for this year plus the wreath I painted in my last video. I hope you like this card as well and will paint it yourself. If you like this card I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. You can follow me on Instagram and Pinterest and if you would like to see photos of the card hop over to my blog. All the links you will find in the description below. In my last video I painted a very simple Christmas wreath. If you haven't watched that yet make sure you do. The video should be showing on your screens now. If not I will link it in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.